Hi, welcome to How to Repair. This video is on how to service and maintain a dishwasher that is not washing correctly or not filling with water. We're working on a white Westing house, but you could use this video for some of the Electrolux Zanussi models and some other makes that have a standard water valve. Now do remember to disconnect the electricity from the supply when working on the machine. A lot of dishwashers are thrown away due to simple faults. Grease and grime builds up in the system over time and can block pressure bowls and pipes. In this video I will show you how to strip the machine down and clean all the components to make the machine work perfectly again. If your machine is not filling, an easy way to check if the machine is working correctly is to pour a gallon of water into the machine or an amount just to cover the base of the floor of the tub. Normally just up to the front by the door seal area will be adequate. There are two different types of valves fitted to dishwashers. The one on the top is a standard valve. The one below has got a pressure switch built into it. We're actually working on the machine which has the top valve, a standard valve. Now you can see I filled the machine now with water and it's just up to the edge of the door. What we have done here is trick the machine into thinking it is filled correctly and as you'll see it has already started the wash cycle. This is a good indication that either the water valve is not working correctly or one of the pressure bowls or switches is not functioning correctly. So what we need to do now is empty the machine and now we'll start stripping the machine down to find where the blockage is or have a look at possibly changing the water valve. What we're doing here is emptying the tub of the bottom rack and we're going to remove the spray arm. As the spray arm is not mechanically driven, it rotates due to the angle of the jets, spraying water through them, therefore rotating the spray arm. You need to make sure all these jets are clear as it will affect the wash cycle if they are blocked. You can see some debris in the end of this one. A useful technique to get the debris out is if you use a paper clip and just make a hook with it, you can normally hook the bits out. We're removing the filter here. This will give us access to the bottom pressure bowl. Firstly, we'll remove a float valve just to make sure it's clean while we're servicing this machine. It just twists until the marks line up and then you can slide it out. Next we're going to remove the pressure bowl. Here you can see a screw that holds it in place, but the first thing we need to do is tilt the machine over and remove the pipe that's attached to it. This pipe goes to a pressure switch, which I will show you in a minute. Now as I said earlier in the video, you do get sharp edges on dishwashers, so do be careful. This pipe has a clip that holds it onto the actual pressure bowl. Just ease it back, be careful, and it will slide off. Now we'll remove the actual pressure bowl. This pressure bowl has one screw that we'll undo, and then we'll slide the pressure bowl out of the base of the tub. Do remember, from brand to brand, the design of these do change, but the basic principles are the same. Pressure bowls fill with water. When they fill with water, they pressurize the air inside them, therefore sending pressurized air through the tube to the pressure switch, which is able to indicate how much water is in the machine. These are very vulnerable to blocking. Just making sure this is perfectly clear, this is now ready to reassemble. As you can see, the water will rise in this bowl and therefore the air will be pushed through the tube to the pressure switch. Now we'll clean this float valve. They normally disassemble, but do be careful when stripping it down. And as you can see, when the float rises, it then shuts the valve. So we'll just give that a good clean. The next thing we're going to do is take the panel off the right hand side of the machine where the main water system is. So this side panel actually comes undone with two screws just inside the door and there's two more at the bottom at the front. 
and there's also four screws which I'll show you in a minute at the back. First thing we need to do is remove the base plate. This will give us access to the two screws behind for the side panel. You have to look quite closely to find them. But then the base plate or the kick strip you can remove. Do be careful as sometimes they do have plastic clips on them. Now we're going to remove this uh, base panel which is hidden behind the kick strip. I'm only removing this for visibility so you can see everything clearly. It will make your life easier as well. And it's only two screws and it just pops off. I'll quickly show you the components underneath here. The pressure switch to the right is a twin system meaning that it's got two pressure levels or two functions and here is the pump that pumps the water out of the machine. This is a water valve or solenoid that fits to the softener where you fill up with salt and the two screws that I was on about are just inside this area here and there's two more screws just inside the door. While I'm taking this side panel off do remember to visit the website for all your video tutorials and you will also find exploded diagrams on this tutorial on this dishwasher helping you identify the parts and please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us on Facebook if you wish. Right, the next thing we need to do is just swing the machine round and we'll undo the four screws at the back and then the side panel will come off. If you're watching this video on a computer you will see some links I've put at the top here taking you to the appropriate places so just click on them and you should be diverted straight through to the correct page. Behind here is the water system and at the end of the video I will show you it all working correctly but first we need to clean the pressure bowl which works the other side of the pressure switch. Now there was two sides to the pressure switch the one side works this pressure bowl now this pressure bowl actually controls the amount of water going into the machine. So we're going to take this pressure bowl off and make sure it's all functioning. I will show you how it works over the sink in a minute. Just one screw at the bottom and then we have to tilt the machine over to remove another pipe that goes to the base of the sump of the machine. It's well worth cleaning this pipe as well as it does fill up with sediment and does reduce uh, the flow to the machine. So there's just one clip onto the sump. You'll get a little bit of water flowing out. And then there's one more clip onto the bottom of that pressure bowl. And once we've removed this, we'll be able to remove the pressure bowl. But firstly, I'm just going to remove the two pipes off the pressure switch so I can blow through them and make sure they're clear and then I'm going to show you how they function. Now by blowing through the pipe you're actually able to make sure the pipe is clear. I'm now going to reattach the pipe to the pressure switch and if you listen carefully you will be able to hear the pressure switch click as I pressurize the air in the pipe. just doing it a few times for you. Here you can see where the water is going to fill inside this pressure bowl. The left hand side is the filling side and the right hand side is where the air will get pressurized by the volume of the water. So I'll just take this to the sink to show you. Blocking the hole at the bottom by doing it this way we'll be able to make sure that all the uh, pipes are clear but as you can see the water level on the left is rising equally to the level on the right 
When this is attached to the machine, you will notice that the level on the left is much lower to the level on the right. This is because it is pressurizing the air. Now that we know that this is all working correctly, we'll refit it to the machine and start assembling the machine. Connecting all the pipes back to the machine and also all the pressure bowls. We'll now reconnect the sump hose which attaches to the pressure bowl and then we'll check the other side of the pressure switch. Now as I said earlier the pressure switch has two sides to it. The one side which we have already tested clicks as soon as the pressure reaches the right amount. The other side which connects to the flotation bowl inside the actual sump of the machine is slightly different. It clicks straight away under pressure but has a slow release valve. The reason for this is as the machine starts to wash it pumps the water to the top spray arm as well as the bottom spray arm and therefore the levels do change in the actual tub. So rather than it constantly turning itself on and off, you will hear a slow release on the switch. In layman's terms, it stops the switch clicking in and out when the main motor starts to circulate the water around the dishwasher. Now we'll just thread the pipe all the way through and we'll refit the internal pressure bowl, which is already clean. Just push it through. You'll have to fit the screw before fitting the pipe to the bottom, otherwise every time you try to fit the pipe it will just slide back. And now we'll quickly just fit the float switch. Remembering to line up the two marks. And this one just locks into place clockwise. Now we'll refit the filter cover. Make sure it's locked into place. and refitting the spray arm and we're ready to tilt the machine over one last pipe to connect You can normally just push it on even though the clip's in place, but do be careful because the pressure bowl is plastic, so you don't want to snap it or uh, break it. Now I'll set the program to its normal wash cycle and we'll see how the machine functions. But as you can see the machine started to fill with water, which is a good indication that the water valve was not at fault and therefore this repair has cost you absolutely nothing and you can see the pressure bowl on the left rising faster than the bowl on the right so it's actually creating air pressure in the bowl on the right and the level on the left is the actual level of the water inside the machine and as you can see the level on the left starts to slow up as the water flows out of the sump and starts to cover the base of the machine inside therefore creating the correct air pressure on this pressure bowl to shut off the water supply and the other pressure bowl will be doing the same and in a second we should have the water valve shutting off there it goes the level on the left slightly drops now as the motor cuts in but the air pressure stays the same in the right hand side
We hope this video helped you fix your machine. Remember, you can always buy us a beer at the website, button above. And there you go, everything working perfectly. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, as that's what keeps us going and able to make these free videos for you. Thanks very much for watching.